Welcome to my channel on the best of fantasy. Today I am reviewing Dead House Landing. This is book two of Ian Esselmont's Path to Ascendancy series. And I will put a link in the description below of my review of book one, Dancer's Lament. Now, I mentioned in my review of Dancer's Lament that as a prequel to the Malazan Book of the Fallen and the novels of the Malazan Empire, the Path to Ascendancy could be a gentle introduction or entry point even into the Malazan world. I got some mixed feedback on that notion with some people supportive of the idea and others against because primarily because it would you wouldn't get the same Easter eggs in there if you hadn't read the Malazan Book of the Fallen and novels of the Malazan Empire before reading Path to Ascendancy. I also mentioned the idea in the discussion that I took part in with Iskar Jarek and Andy Smith and Alan from the Library of Alexandria, our collaborative Malazan discussion, which by the way, if you haven't seen that, we had a lot of fun doing that. Uh, so go and check that out if you haven't seen it yet. It's on Iskar Jarek's channel. Anyway, my good friend and no less an expert on the Malazan world than Iskar Jarek, actually disagreed with me on this idea of Path to Ascendancy being an introduction to the Malazan world. And he thought you should just start in with Gardens of the Moon. And I can respect that viewpoint. Uh, but I still am entertaining this idea, this notion, at least until Erickson or Esselmont tell me to shut up about it. Also, by the way, if you are a fan of Malazan Book of the Fallen and you have not yet read Path to Ascendancy, I am pretty confident in saying you are going to love this series. Along with Dancer's Lament, Dead House Landing is an excellent and entertaining read for anyone new to the Malazan world. But of course, I will admit that there are some moments and some little nods that take on a deeper significance if you're already an established fan of the Malazan books. And um, there's like, for example, one moment with a young fellow named Jack, who at one point burns a bridge. And uh, <laughs> the book also has a, the feel of a, of a gathering of legends. And this is, of course, before they were legends. Although I have to say that they're already showing signs of being quite formidable. These are the, the mages and the fighters and the assassins and the strategists behind the founding of the Malazan Empire. And um, it seems to primarily though to have been the vision of Wu, whom we met in, met in Dancer's Lament, and now he is known as Kellenved. And uh, his sanity is actually rather questionable. Now, Kellenved and Dancer are still very much central to this story, but they do share the stage with an expanded point of view cast. Esselmont wisely keeps Kellenved mysterious by not making him a point of view character. And instead we continue to get Dancer's perspective as the two of them explore the realm of shadow and the Azath or dead house on Malaz. The interactions between these two and their growing loyalty to each other uh, through their trials are, are some of my favorite parts of the story. And I would say that fans of these two will be delighted by Dead House Landing. There are also, of course, several other excellent POV characters in the book. Carthorn Crust is the main POV character among the Nepons in the story. And in his relationship with the mysterious and fascinating Lady Surith, he performs the same function that Dancer does in his relationship with Kellenved. That is to say, he is the observer who helps the readers to understand just how significant and interesting this character is whose head we don't see into. There are also some mages with some familiar names like Tattersail and Nadurian and Tayshren. These are great perspective characters in there as well. And there is another uh, major player who is a POV character, Dasem Ultor, whom we met in Dancer's Lament. And I have to say, his parts in the story were actually some of my personal favorites. 
And these and, and some other minor characters provide the threads of the story that gradually converge. And this is a, this is a convergence that is not on the scale of what you would see in the Malazan Book of the Fallen, but it is nevertheless skillfully done in a nice tight plot. The various perspective characters allow some glimpses of different parts of the Malazan world before it was the Malazan world. For example, Malaz itself is central to the story and it is ruled by Admiral Mok in conjunction with a large criminal element. And it, it conveys basically a piratical vibe that's a lot of fun. But uh, with its dead house, Malaz is also a place of great power. It is in fact a magnet to power, a point of convergence that acts um, to attract some very big characters, including some divine and some who were ancient beings that you probably will have heard of if you're a fan of the Malazan Book of the Fallen. The reader also spends a good deal of time in the shattered realm of shadow as Kellenved tries to ponder his path to power. And back in the mundane world, there are glimpses of Nap and Kartul and the city of Lihang and the Otataral Island off the coast of the Seven Cities continent, among other things. Speaking of convergences of power, I really enjoyed the portrayal and the role of magic in Deadhouse Landing. The book reaches simultaneous climaxes in uh, the mundane world and in the battles that go on among the various warrens. And these parallel struggles interweave at several key points. Yet another element of Deadhouse Landing that I really enjoyed is the humor, which is every bit as important to the experience as it is in the Malazan Book of the Fallen. One example is the origin story of the name Kellenved, which really made me <laughs> shake my head. And uh, I have to say, I had, a, I had a huge grin across my face when I read that part. And I probably chuckled for quite a long time. And if there's not quite as much pain in Dead House Landing as you would find in the Malazan Book of the Fallen, there are still some very significant losses that add to the compelling nature of this book. And they keep at the forefront the knowledge that the stakes are high. In short, Dead House Landing features a compelling story that is a worthy successor to Dancer's Lament. It really increases actually the scope and the stakes of the first story with some excellent pacing that reaches a crescendo near the end. Very skillfully written. I also experienced no significant weaknesses in this story. And I think this is just further evidence that Ian Esselmont deserves much more credit than he gets as a major literary talent in the fantasy genre. I'm also very excited to read Kellen Vid's Reach soon, and eventually the Gistel when that comes out. I'm not entirely sure when that is coming out. Uh, earlier in the year, it was supposed to be this month, but I, I'm not sure that's still gonna happen. So if any of you actually know about the Gistel, uh, leave a comment, please. For my next review, I will be discussing book two of the Liveship Traders trilogy. Before that review comes out in about a week, next Saturday, I hope to release a video uh, sometime midweek, probably Tuesday. And this is going to be another exciting collaboration that I'm going to be taking part in. This time it's going to be on the first law books by Joe Abercrombie. And I'm going to be discussing them with some other booktubers who are probably some familiar faces to many of you. I'm going to be making an announcement about that tomorrow, hopefully, if that all works out as planned. And I can't wait to, really to tell you all about it. It's gonna be uh, a, a lot of fun. So I hope you will join me for all of these uh, exciting videos that are coming up. And until next time.